Hello, my name is Pete Martin, and this is Fiddle Basics video number one on holding the instrument. Uh, first of all, I want to say I don't believe there is any one correct technique, but I think there are more ergonomically efficient techniques than others. And I have definitely studied a lot of ergonomics. Um, a lot of it was due to injuries I had where I couldn't play for a number of years, and I was lucky to meet a terrific performing arts doctor in Seattle in the 90s, uh, Roberta Brockman, that uh, showed me a bunch of things and then showed me how to teach these things. And uh, it was through her inspiration that I started to study ergonomics in depth. And um, so that's what I will show you now is the things she taught me, plus a number of things I've discovered through my own study. I'm a real good example to look at for holding an instrument because I do have a very long neck. Really what we want is to be able to hold the instrument without having to hike the shoulder up or push the neck way down like this to hold. You can see I'm so tall from here to here. I'm going to take a fiddle that has a short chin rest, a pretty normal chin rest, and no shoulder rest. If I hold it up in playing position and turn my chin, you can see I'm about probably a good two to three inches off the chin rest with my chin. So what I would have to do is hike up my shoulder and push my chin way down to hold it like this. That is how I played for a number of years before I learned anything about ergonomics. And that is one of the reasons why I ended up with such bad tendonitis in my arm that I had to take that amount of time off and then relearn how to play. First of all, the general position that Dr. Brockman taught me that we want to hold the instrument in, if you can think of a line straight in front of you as you look straight ahead and then a line that is parallel with your shoulders, we want the fiddle to go about 45 degrees. To that. Okay. We also want the fiddle just the neck of the fiddle to be just about parallel with the floor. The headstock can be just a little bit lower than the chin. We don't want it way down here and we don't want it way up here. Just barely lower than the chin is a very good ergonomic place to put it. Okay. If it's too high, you'll see some classical players that hold it way up like this they say in order to get here, actually holding it up like this you can get into real shoulder ergonomic problems by having to hold your arms so high. But if you do it the right way, even if it's held down here, you can still get all the way up on the fingerboard. Alright, so I'm going to show you. Most people actually do need a shoulder rest of some type or other. If you do need a shoulder rest, and I, uh, the type I recommend is called a Bon Musica, B-O-N-M-U-S-I-C-A, and I'll show it on the screen here. Um, for full size violin. The reason I like this one so much, and, and when I showed this to Dr. Brockman, she just flipped and uh, said that she'd been looking for something like this for a long time. Um, took us a few times to figure out how to use it, but boy is it is it a really nice ergonomic design. It's the only one that has this little lip on it. The metal is thin enough to where it's bendable, to where you can bend it to fit completely up on your shoulder like this. And then it has a number of height adjustments plus tilt adjustments on the feet which most shoulder rests, most shoulder rests for one thing, will not bend here to fit different people's anatomy here. Uh, if they fit you real good in the right place, they're fine, but if they don't, they're, they're really almost useless. Um, and then most of them only go up a certain amount of ways, or they have a certain amount of height, and it's that all the time. Um, and not a lot of them are very flexible in how much you can tilt the shoulder rest. 
So, here is uh, the, the first thing you do when you get a shoulder rest, and so this is the first thing I will do in my private lessons when I do this with people, is I will take and bend it, bend the shoulder rest around where it fits. And by this, you want to bend it to where it fits, it touches everywhere from the top right here on the back of the shoulder all the way down to here. So the entire line is up against you. Now you'll have to probably look in a mirror or with the aid of a video camera, you could probably would help. Uh, the um, built-in webcam on a computer would probably help a lot. Video it from different angles. Look in a mirror at different angles and, and adjust it until it's right where you need it. The way to determine how high you need something is to take your fiddle without a shoulder rest, put it in this 45 degree position up on your shoulder up here, turn and see how far you are from your chin to where the chin rest is. Then make it that tall. Now if you're like me, who, uh, <laughs> well, this friend and I at Weezer, Idaho at the National Old Time Fillers Contest one year, had somebody convinced I'd had two extra vertebrae surgically implanted in my neck. I have a much longer neck than most people do, so instead of having to put that much height underneath the fiddle, Dr. Brockman told me that if I had to have the fiddle all the way up here with all the height underneath, that my right arm, in order to get onto the G-string, now would have to be up so far in the air that I could get into some right arm ergonomic problems. So she, she suggested that I have an extended chin rest made, which I did. Uh, my friend Dwayne Lasley, L-A-S-L-E-Y, uh, who is one of the two proprietors at Lasley and Russ, R-U-S-S, -S, violins in Seattle. You can look them up on the web, lastlyandrust.com, I'm pretty sure. Dwayne built an extended chin rest, and he's done that for a number of people that I've known who have seen this. And so if you, there's nobody that I am aware of that manufactures these as a regular commercial item, so you might want to contact Dwayne and just ask about an extended chin rest like Pete Martin's and he'll know exactly what you mean. So, to find, to fit the shoulder rest, of course, we bend it around to where it fits good. Put the fiddle at 45 degrees, turn my chin, and I need about this much height. So I'm going to adjust these, the feet, by screwing up and down to approximately the right height. The other thing I do, I'm holding the rest flat and notice that I've bent the feet probably about 30, 25, 30 degrees forward like this. What that will help to do is put the instrument in the right place. The other thing that helps to do is you do not put the shoulder rest on straight across the back. Really with most people it works better if on the E string side of the neck, the E string is the thin string, on the E string side of the neck that the feet, the uh, you can see where the point is of the lower bout right here, the um, the pad of the foot right there is just a tiny little bit away from here. And on the G string side of the neck, the G string being the thickest side, and for right handers, the G string side is where the shoulder rest is. We put it back quite a ways. Where it works really good is if you have a standard Guaneri style chin rest, which this one is, it's just extended. Where the point of the chin rest is, 
where the point of the chin rest is, is just about straight above where the screw mechanism is that adjusts the height for the foot. Okay. Uh, you'll have to play around with this quite a bit, and you may have to get somebody else to help you. Maybe you can have somebody else that's going to help you view this video, and you can, between the two of you, figure it out. But now, I put the shoulder rest against the shoulder to where it was in the same place of when I did not, was not holding the fiddle. You know, when I just put the shoulder rest up like this to fit it. Just turn sideways and your chin rest should be right there. So now, as I turn, you can see that I'm not pushing up on my shoulder at all. and I'm not really pushing down on my head. I just kind of let the natural weight of my skull just kind of lean onto the, the chin rest. And the instrument is supported very easily. And now I'm able to move around quite easily. Okay. Another thing is we want, we don't want to have the fiddle flat like this. We want to angle it probably, oh, once again about 30 degrees. Okay. So remember, we want to put the fiddle about 45 degrees from straight out in front of us and parallel with our shoulders. You have a number of degrees either way that you can play with. You know, 45 degrees is not a hard and set rule, but somewhere in that vicinity is really good ergonomically for both arms. So that's the basics of holding the instrument. Check out the other videos I did, and you can also check out my website where you can download uh, free PDF books of fiddle and mandolin playing and take a look at uh, performance videos and other instruction videos, some mandolin instruction videos as well. And uh, if anybody is interested, I do teach private lessons in the greater Seattle area, as well as Skype webcam lessons to any place else.